in today's video, we have, like I said, a very special guest. His name is Starhib, but a few years back, he was also known as Tyler. And the reason for that is because he converted to Islam a few years ago. And today we have him with us. Right now, he runs a YouTube channel where he gives tips and advice to new converts and where he talks about social issues in the Muslim community, sort of like what we're doing right here on this YouTube channel. So we had a chance to you know grab him and you know really get to talk to him about his experiences um what his life was like before he converted why did he convert and what was the challenges and struggles and experiences um in his life after he converted to islam like with his family with marriage and all of this good stuff so if you want to listen to that then please stay tuned but yeah with that said Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuhu. Jazakallahu khair for subscribing to the YouTube channel and please do continue to support us. Sahib, how are you? Yeah, alhamdulillah, I'm well. Thank you, yourselves? Likewise, likewise. Alhamdulillah, man. What have oh, you been good. up to today? Um, Sleeping, mostly. Um, I was still at work at six o'clock this morning, so... um. Yeah, I came home, went to bed, and I woke up a few hours ago. Okay, okay. <laughs> you work night shifts? Uh, yeah, 12 yeah. hours. Right, 12 right, hours, so. you know. Oh, I shot well, man. Yeah. <laughs> I shot well, man. yeah, I don't know. I, I, I can never work night shifts. Like, for me, like, I, I'm always awake at night. Like, I'd say I'm a night owl because I just stay awake at night and go to sleep during the day. It's horrible. But then when it comes to, like, working at night, I can't do that. <laughs> I just found it was easier because um, when I first started the job, it was you were doing twelve hours anyway. But it was either it was you were doing three days from six in the morning till six at night, and then another three days six at night till six in the morning, and mm. it was messing up my sleep schedule. Uh, so uh, I right. said, "Well, let me just do all nights," and yeah, that's easier for me that way. What, and it's cheap, uh, what, what do you work as? Sorry, if you don't mind me asking. Um, I work in security. I'm oh, a right, okay. Guy, basically. Night guard, yeah. right, right, okay, right, right. Oh, okay, okay. Sweet. Yeah, and, and you've hit uh, 1K subscribers now. Mashallah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah, man. Like, it, it blew up, like, within, I think, maybe the last two, three days. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. Uh, what was your sub count before three days ago? Um, I think it was... I think it was maybe about 500 a week ago and yeah, then okay. it got to 600 within that week and then that was 600 when I left work when I woke up the next day it was at 770 something yeah by the time I'd gotten to work that day so a couple of hours later it was at 800 um, then it, I think it hit 900 right at midnight and then after that it went up to a thousand that is crazy oh. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like and you're saw, still saw, growing as well. <laughs> I yeah. saw the videos. Um, I saw the videos. You were like, yo, I hit um, 500 subscribers. Right. Next thing you know, I had 600. Then like two yeah. hours later, I hit 800. <laughs> yeah. <know? laughs> well, it was getting to the point where it was happening so quickly. I didn't actually know what to say in those videos because like yeah, literally you just nothing had changed. <laughs> yeah. You just recorded one like five minutes ago. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> what more can I say right now? Mm. I get you, man. You know, um, I th I think I said it. Um, I told you yesterday, like something crazy happened, right? Yeah. All right. So basically, I I guess like I'm being one hundred percent honest. I'm not I'm not saying this for like, you know, uh, for any any reason. Just just because it this is legit what happened, right? So, um, when I saw, I think it was your five hundred subscriber video, or mm -hmm. your six hundred. Um, I think it was the five hundred subscriber video, right? Um. Yeah, so when I was uh, commenting on that video, right, my original comment that I wrote I wrote down, Wallah, I swear to God, yeah, this is what I wrote down. I wrote down, may Allah get you to 1K subscribers. Mm -hmm. I wrote that. So, um, and then like, I made that dwell myself in it. But then I was like, oh, uh, maybe it's, uh, maybe I shouldn't write it. I'm not too sure. So I was like, yeah, may Allah just, you know, get, get, give you more success in it afterwards. <laughs> but that, that was actually what I wrote down the first time. And it's mad, it's mad. So, you know, when when I saw, like, you getting up for, like, 800, I was like, yeah. I, like, I had a feeling it was coming, you know. It's crazy. It's crazy yeah. Man. 
um, I don't know if you guys have ever had that where you've made a du'a for something and then literally like right after you make the du'a, it actually happens to the point where you have to kind of look back up and go, well, that was fast. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got a low on speed deal. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Oh, but, that's um, the thing, you know. I mean, while I'm obviously happy to see the channel grow, um, I wish it was for like, other reasons. Because when I first started out in like doing Islamic social media content, it, I was just doing like social reminders, which yeah. is one of the reasons I like your guys' podcast so much because it's kind of aimed at the same audience. Mm. Yeah. But it wasn't until like I do videos talking about other people that was what was getting the views. Yeah, it's true. Like, like Mr. Watois first, I think that got up to like three thousand. Yet, like, my reminder about, you know, why alcohol is haram only got a couple of hundred. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. so it's just kind of a shame that, like, my most recent or my most viewed video to date, I think is an hour, I think it might be at, like, 14K. Mm. But that was a video that I was talking about, the Dawood Kim situation. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's why I feel it's kind of a shame that that's the video that's got 14K when I've got better videos out there. Out there, yeah. 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 No. That makes sense. Now, I think uh, over time, when you develop a, a decent you know, audience that is loyal to you, your other videos will start to grow as well. It happens with all the big, big kind of like, you know, uh, social media influencers where they will get to a certain point where you'll see that if you go back like six years ago and their old videos will start to grow considerably because all, yeah. the new, all, the, all their loyal fan base uh they want to check out their old videos and then th that will start popping off yeah 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 not even that it's like you know let's say you're making uh these sort of reaction videos to um mm. uh, to two trending topics right um you can still make um those other content in it i think what it is is like these sort of trending topics is what gets you discovered on youtube yeah. So that's what gets people to see your channel in the first place. Because, you know, in all honesty, I don't think people type in too much. Like, let's say alcohol is, is a haram. Probably not that yeah. many people type it in. But they'll type yeah, in, exactly. like, you know, Mr. Watwa and stuff like that. They'll type these things in. But then once mm -hmm. they see your channel and then they subscribe, then I feel like 100% they will be very inclined to look at your... Um, yeah. if, you, if you then post a video, let's say, on alcohol is haram, they'll be 100% inclined to look at that. Um, I say like let's say one thing I did right. So on the latest video, it was it was about that um, Dawood Kim, right? Mm -hmm. So alhamdulillah, like that video um, got mad uh, mad views. You know, alhamdulillah, it's on one yeah. k views now. Um, and we got about just since yesterday, we got about like you know um, I think seventy seventy five um, subscribers since last night. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alhamdulillah. And what I say is like in that video, like the video was about that Dawood Kim, but within the video I spoke about okay, this is why alcohol is wrong. I actually mentioned that, you know, yeah. like sort of using it as an example, you know, this is why we shouldn't generalize Muslims. This is why you know, um, you can get forgiveness. You know, it's like you got these subtopics that, that are inside it, but we're using that sort of um, example or that situation as an example. So I think there's ways of working around it. You know, you should be 100% proud of like your four, a 14K video. I think it's a really good video because it's not like you, you made very solid points. You know, that's why people mm. liked it. So 100% you should yeah. be proud of that video. Well, that was the odd thing because I, I think I'd heard of Dawood Kim maybe once before that video. Because yeah. most of the prominent YouTubers I follow are either in the UK or the US. Like, I don't even really follow ones in mainland Europe. Yeah. But, um, so when some, because someone first reached out to me about that to say like, oh, Dawood Kim and Yong's World, another South Korean revert brother, are having beef. And would I mind doing a video on it and offering to mediate the situation? Yeah, Which yeah. I said, yeah, of course, that's not a problem at all. Um, it wasn't until after I made that video the everything else started to come out of the woodwork and that's why i had to make another video with and it did it was a clickbait title where i said you know um dawood kim exposed yeah. i only put that hoping that it would get the same amount of views so i could clarify a point because mm. people started started commenting on my original video saying that i was blaming the victim and i said i'm not talking about the victim at all i'm just trying to mediate the issues between these two brothers that's mm. all i'm trying to do yeah yeah and the amount of like rumors that i've heard about this entire situation everything from you know the sister in the situation being drunk to her not being drunk to her not being muslim to her being islamophobic and has been trying to attack dawood kim for years 
and it's just eventually I just had to say, you know what, Allah knows best. Mm. Um, all I can hope is that everyone in this situation gets the justice that they truly deserve. Yeah. Um, like I say, from an Islamic standpoint, Dawood Kim, you know, if he repented for it, he accepted Islam, you know, his sins have been washed away. If from a, a South Korean legal standpoint, he has still has something to answer for, then that's entirely up to them. I don't know how their legal system works. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I, 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 you can you can ask Mohammed. I, I said the exact same thing uh, yesterday mm. when we were talking about it in, in private conversation. And I said to him that, um, uh, you know, from an Islamic standpoint, uh, you're supposed to call out slash defend uh, based on public information about whoever whoever's involved, right? Yeah, so cool. we we had we had the police report. We had you know his statement, uh, and obviously the victim statement within the police report as well. And mm-hmm. I said exactly what you said. If there's anything further to be discussed in terms of investigation, the police will take that up, right? Yeah, but as like, far as we know, these, to do so. exactly like it, all these rumors, all these all, all this information. It's just he said what she said, right? So yeah. based on what we actually have verified, we can establish that he is at least trying to, or has done in the past, made sincere repentance. And based on that fact, we should defend him as, a, as you know, as a, as our Muslim brother and his honor, mm. of course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and it's it's like I said as well. It's like in these type of situations, there's three sides to the story. There's going to be his side. There's going to be her side. And then in the middle, there's going to be the actual unadulterated truth, True, which yeah. only obviously they know, they and Allah know. Yeah. So, because even the police can only act upon what they've been told. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, you know, at the end of the day, like I say, it's up to their legal system to handle it however they see fit. But in an Islamic mm-hmm. sense, he's fine. Yeah. And I'm to say, I'm not saying that to victim shame in any way, form, or yeah. fashion. Yeah. I'm merely stating the Islamic viewpoint on this. Yeah. Yeah, That's definitely. One hundred percent is correct. You know, like um, uh, I don't know, like so, so I could tell you, like um. When we posted our video, we posted a clip on After School Hour, the Instagram page. Mm. We yeah. got quite a bit of hate for that uh, post. Yeah. Um, everyone was like, oh, you're sympathizing with him, this and that. I'm like, I'm not sympathizing with him. I said, like, if his repentance is genuine, if, right? I'm not saying it is. I don't know. Only Allah knows. If it is yeah. genuine, then of course he's forgiven. That's just how Islam works. You know, I'm mm. not going to tell you what, how it doesn't work. That's just how it works, you know? And of course, I, like you said, the situation, like, you know, when it comes to rumors, rumors, if you start looking at rumors, you'll just go in a cycle because this person will say that, that person will say this, and we'll just go on, you know. Um, yeah. For us, we can only look at, like, okay, public facts, right? And that's about it. You know, mm-hmm. when you look at rumors and it's like, who's there to verify those type of things? And you can really say anything. Yeah. And at yeah, that exactly. point, you can risk falling to slander as well if you say something that isn't, you know, true about someone. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened with me with the Mr. Watois situation when that first came out. Mm. Um, are you guys familiar with that whole scenario at all? I saw I, a small bit of it. Yeah, I saw yeah. I saw I saw your video. Um, not mm. all of them. I saw one of your videos on Mr. So yeah. it, it was about um, if I'm correct, it was like um, he he converted to Islam, but for his conversion, he had this campaign going, which he wanted like hundred thousand pounds or something like that. Yeah. Uh, basically, um, I'll start from the very beginning with that and just like speak all the way through. Um, I remember I was scrolling through like one of Muhammad Hijab's posts on Instagram. Um, I, was, yeah. I was reading through the comments because there was a massive like atheist versus you know morality debate. Going oh on. yeah, yeah, yeah. And someone happened to comment, "Oh, can you speak on the Mister Watois situation?" I'm like, "Well, what's going on with him?" Because I, I, I've always known who he was, but I, I stopped following him after a while because it seemed like he was only doing reaction videos. For purely for views he was yeah, never yeah. intending to take it any further which i said no if that's what he wants to do that's fine but it's just i just won't subscribe to him yeah. um so that's when i looked into it and the way that he explained it anyway i'm sorry for the light keep shining behind me i'm gonna see if i can kind of scooch over a little bit here yeah, um, right. <laughs> um was the you know i want to set up this shahada foundation i need a hundred thousand dollars to set this up and I want to be the first person to take my Shahada under this foundation. So essentially he was saying, I need to make a hundred K before I can take my Shahada, mm. which yeah, is at it, is least from the way sus- that it came across. Yeah. yeah it came yeah. across suspect. Yeah. Um, which, so why well, I made that first video because I was speaking from a place of very strong emotion. Obviously I've pulled the video down. Now I've apologized for it because I said some things that quite frankly, I shouldn't have said, because mm. I said, you know, you are committing fraud. 
Um, you know, I, I made it sound like it was a very definite thing without having the literal evidence to hand, yeah. which is why I then made several other videos apologizing for it, retracting that video. I've pulled the videos and any slanderous ones down. I was just as quick to react to his um, Shahada video when he posted it and also apologized to him publicly on his channel because it wasn't something I made without um, – I never wanted to be right about that situation because if I was right, it means that he was committing fraud. Yeah. So yeah. I was I made those videos hoping to be wrong the entire time. And I wasn't the only one obviously who thought that. I was just I think the first person to actually make a video about that situation. Um which I think then made the rounds because I think um Ali Dow was made aware of it, Way of Life SQ was made aware of it, Smile yeah. to Janna. I think. Um I told Smile to Janna about it, he just ignored it. Yeah. Um hmm. but the only problem is that fell out from that is people who were on my side of the issue and even some of my own subscribers then went on to way of life sq's channel when he made his video and started slandering the brother rescue there yeah. so then obviously i then had to go there and tell look listen stop because some of his followers thought that i was telling my people to say that and i was right. like no okay. i'm not okay. telling them to do this at all i yeah. have nothing but love and respect for brother sq i've said that publicly in a video as well and the you know whatever they're saying they're saying off their own but yeah. that's when it hit me, like how quickly things can escalate. So, yeah. and you know, and as they say, hindsight's twenty twenty. So when I was going back and rewatching those videos, I, I was just cringing the entire time because mm. I was like, you know, I, I really shouldn't have said that. That was wrong. And especially now that he's become Muslim as well mm. on top of that. So that's why I'd, I just hid the videos because the views were still going up. Right. And, and so I was like, you know, I need to do, I'll just make them private so nobody else can see them. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I get you. I get you. You know what? A massive respect for that as well, though. Like, you know, sometimes when we make content or we make an opinion, a lot of people, they they tend to be quite um, arrogant with the fact. So they don't mm. like being proven wrong. But, you know, obviously for you, you were like, okay, look, I made a mistake. So I'm going to take it down. I'm going to apologize. So that's, you know, a lot of respect for that, man. A lot of yeah. respect for that. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, because obviously cause you sort of mentioned that. Um, you know, you weren't too happy with, you know, what video it was that got the 14K likes, I mean, views, right? Mm. So what yeah. is your plan for the future when it comes to your YouTube channel? Um, basically, um, I, I, well, I've always wanted to do something in regards to social media. And then obviously when I became Muslim, that was became my niche to work with, if you will. So yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to like make um, videos dealing with, social reminders but from an islamic perspective so as opposed to just saying like this is haram because it says so in the quran uh, but also give real world examples of why yeah. it's haram like practical um, reasons like, yeah exactly so I, i'd really like to do that and just to help spread like i say islam through social dower as opposed to um like you say religious lectures for example because I, i'm no scholar Mm. by any means which is one of the reasons that i don't really talk about religious issues that much so mm. you'll never see me quoting hadiths and quran verses because i've done that a couple of times and in the comment section people actually said well actually that's not what this verse means yeah yeah and so just due to a lack of knowledge on my part so and i'm not saying that i won't maybe get there someday but for the level that i'm at now like i say it's just um dealing with social issues from an islamic perspective and spreading the dawah through that way yeah, yeah. right okay 100%. Mm. so uh, a lot like what we're kind of doing as well uh, mm. social issues we're talking about social issues too um but yeah again like same same over here with after school dawah you know we we always tell ourselves like listen we're not <laughs> we're not scholars we're not sheikhs we're not going to pretend that we are um mm. but obviously alhamdulillah like, let's say um and between the three of us we went to an islamic grammar school and we got we got a bit of education, so we use what we can, but we don't mm. try and push ourselves outside of what we can't do, hundred mm. percent. Um, so yeah, so you, you're you're going to sort of um, move towards or go back towards the whole, you know, social issues. Are you going to still make like videos, like reactory videos? Um, yeah, I don't, um, I don't see why not. I wouldn't make reactory videos because obviously, if something comes up, then as I'm getting more into, I guess, the public light for lack of a better term, it's almost kind of expected that you should have an opinion on it. Yeah. Whether yeah. that opinion is 100%. the popular opinion or not is obviously a different story, but to see, uh, it's almost seen by a lot of people because I've thought this about other people as well, is the fact that 
like to not have an opinion on it is almost considered as wrong or lazy or you know whatever the case yeah, may yeah. be yeah especially so, when you've already been doing making these videos people yeah, expect it, that yeah mm. so in a sense I've, I've kind of almost trapped myself because of that because now it almost means that the next time a scandal comes along which obviously it will happen yeah um i've now almost got to make a video on it mm -hmm. which you know, and, and also, especially now, that obviously, where my subscriber base is going, because if someone hadn't have mentioned Dawood King, I would have had no idea that this was even going on right, um, yeah, yeah. until like a few days after everyone else has already spoken about it. It's yeah. like with the whole Hassanat situation way back when, when that happened, yeah. I had no idea who these people were until everything had already come out about them. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. But... Yeah, so essentially that now, obviously, now that I've done that, potentially I'll probably, every time something comes up, I'll probably have to do a video on it, which isn't, like I say, necessarily a bad thing, um, like when the whole Netflix cuties thing came out. Oh, yeah. 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 So obviously, it's not just Muslims that are outraged by that. A lot of Christians, a lot of non-religious people are outraged by it because yeah, definitely, it's, definitely. it's sexualizing children. So, like I say, I, I have no problem doing, like I say, videos like that because it's something that needs to be made awareness of. I just don't want my channel to turn into, like, every video is just me exposing someone now. Yeah. Right. Because that, I, I find that as a very kind of sad way to live your yeah. YouTube yeah, life, definitely. if you will. Yeah. You know, I guess what I'd have to say is, obviously, at the end of the day, obviously, you have your subscriber base, and they'll have an expectation mm -hmm. of you, but at the end of the day, it's your channel, you know? Yeah. Um, you can do what you want with it. I think it's a good right now. It might be a good mix to have both. You know, have um have videos mm. on social issues and have reactory videos on you know, like mm. you said, on incidences, uh, scandals that happen. Um, mm. and then I guess you know, of course, like over time, you could slowly maybe reduce like the exposing type of videos, you know, and yeah. um, increase the social issues type of videos. Um, mm. Definitely. I mean, my advice would be like, listen, it's your channel. You you, you can yeah. and should do what you want with it. You know, I guess the last mm. thing anyone would want is to um, make videos on something they're not, they don't believe in. You get me? Yeah, exactly. Um, I think that's what would be sad, you know. Um, like that's kind of like, let's say with us, um, like let's say me, Saad, Tahmid, we've been involved in the Dawa community in universities and stuff and like throughout the uk and like youth camps and everything and the reason why we recently started after school dawa one of the reasons is because it's our own thing you know yeah. we it's our own thing and we can do it the way we want you know for example let's say i've you know i've been a part of like islamic society and etc over there you know it's limited how much i can do you know yeah. um let's say you know the person above me wants me to um have an event on this, give a talk on that. You know, I can't really, I can't say no. I can't say no, I don't want to do that. But with yeah. After School Dawa, now, because it's our thing, we have control over what we want to post and what we don't want to post. Yeah, exactly. And I think that freedom is very liberating to have. So mm -hmm. definitely keep that up and don't think that you don't need to have that. You know, yeah. another point I wanted to make, right? Just going back to the whole, like, I think Saad asked a question about, you know, um, for those people who have um you know they're, they're thinking about islam right and they're very inclined towards it but then someone comes up and they're like wait a minute but aisha was this age oh but yeah. the prophet did this but islam says this islam says death punishment islam says this blah 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 and a lot of these um a lot of these misconceptions or these questions or these doubts come into mind and what i have to say about that is that the, the reason why these questions or these misconceptions come about is because there are people, wallahi, there are people who try their best to make Islam look bad. And they, they, they probably studied years themselves just to look for these things buried in Islam, right? Oh, of course. And, you know, try and, you know, skew it up and everything. So definitely, like, it's not something that you know oh you're learning about like taqwa and stuff you're not just going to find out about islamic jurisprudence just like that mm. and like tahib said there are there are resources online um a resource i would recommend is yakin institute right mm. is a website and where they talk a lot about misconceptions and stuff you know like for example if someone ever asked me the question of aisha radiallahu and her age i'd be like yo just watch this video by yakin institute they have like a one hour long mm. video on it that explains absolutely everything and that's it you know yeah um so definitely there are resources online now 
you know um mm. w- one thing that's interesting like you um before you mentioned like um sort of this hesitation to go to the masjid because it was like sort of something unknown mm. yeah i think you know um and then the fact that the imam was young and that's what helps you relate to him yeah i definitely agree with that i think even for like you know muslims nowadays like um like young muslim like the muslim youth you know obviously because we're in this country we speak english with our friends we speak english yeah. around like usually like for example for me i speak english with my dad even you know so um when when you have imams who are who are old who are from back home it's very hard for the youth to be relatable with them yeah. um but definitely when when you have an imam when you have people in the masjid who are sort of you know younger sort of born and brought up here as well you know it's much easier for us to relate you know i know that yeah. like um right now i have two masjids near me you know and there was a point in time when they were run by like old people from back home who couldn't even speak english right and yeah. you know as youth we felt very disconnected from the mosque at the time but oh, yeah, absolutely yeah yeah hamdulillah now like like in your situation like the the imam are like makimos right he's about like 25 years old or something 25 27 wow yeah that's a bit young <laughs> <laughs> well he's like obviously there's the main imam and then he's the imam's son who's sort of oh. taking charge of things oh, okay. but he's doing such a great job with it you oh, know alhamdulillah um and then obviously like shafron mosque over there like you know there are a lot of people who you know like when we were young we used to go there right and there's them people who are who are sort of young adults now you know 35 years old and etc and they're sort mm. of taking charge you know and making events and stuff like that and mm. i think it's a really really good opportunity and obviously for those of you watching and you know you're not muslim and you're interested about it don't hesitate to go to the masjid and check it out like the mm. uh, the masjids like tahib can testify to this they're more than welcome to having you there and mm listening to you um i guess a question i wanted to ask you right um because i've met quite a few like people who are interested in faith at university and stuff right their biggest concern when it came to and i thought and i know you addressed this a little bit right but the biggest concern when it comes to islam is that is how their family and friends will react to them um i know some really like i know this one girl who when she was to- when sorry was it her yeah when she was told when she told her parents about because that she wanted to become muslim right her parents were hindus right when she told her parents that she wanted to become muslims they kicked her out they kicked her out of the house mm. she got disowned you mm. know so there's there there for a lot of people there can be this real threat of just being disowned or being shunned or rejected by the community you know mm. what advice would you give to them um i think it might be slightly different depending on the community that they're in so for example like i think historically hindus and muslims have had problems before yeah. in, uh, so potentially that might have been one of the reasons for the anger they also if or if they were for example strict hindus mm. um that might have also been a case as well as it would have been if they, they were strictly Christian or whatever the case may be. Um, so for example, in, in a video where I talk about like, right, like when you become Muslim, who do you tell? If you do not feel safe telling your family, don't, yeah. you know, pray because obviously at the end of the day, if you're in a position where you can't pray because of whatever reason, you you are genuinely if you can't if you can't pray for fear that you'll get hurt by praying like obviously from you know, your parents or whoever the case may be you know you are allowed to lay it to the point where until you can go somewhere where you can yeah yeah 100%. or even if it's a case of like where you have to pretend to be asleep in order to be able to do your prayers or whatever wherever it is yeah you know that's fine um obviously the only thing potentially that you might not be able to do is obviously in regards to the Hindu, because I don't know what their practices and beliefs are. Is like for, if it involves praying to an idol, fair enough, you might not be able to do that because I don't. But unless it's, I, I believe um, the Islamic rules in this are if, if, unless it's forced. So yeah, right. if it's if it's uh, something to endanger your life. Um, yeah, yeah. So if potentially in that case, then obviously fair enough. You know, do what you need to do because I think um, this 
actually leads into another good point is that's actually what Takiya is. It's denying your Islamic faith for the sake of self-preservation. So yeah. in a case like this, it technically would believe be okay because if she uh, turned around and said, I'm not praying to these idols, I'm Muslim now, her parents would have immediately thrown her out of the house. If she had nowhere else to go, that could endanger her life. Yeah. 100%. So, yeah, at least until she's able to, like, say, if she's able to move out of the house or move into, like, a shared house with only women. Hmm. I mean, it's the same concept that uh, you see in the early Sunnah, right? Uh, mm. When you when you study the Bhagavad of the Prophet, there were, I think, for the first three years, if I remember correctly, there were there was no public preaching of Islam. It was all yeah, secret and in private. There were private it groups. There were secret until, groups. Well, it was only yeah. until Omar ibn al Khattab accepted Islam that yeah. he remained private. And he was a major figure as well, for, you know, for him within the Quraysh, mm. within the clan of the Prophet, to accept mm. uh, tribe of the Prophet. Sorry, to accept Islam um so yeah i think that that's fine to an extent what you're saying is you know trying i know uh, ali dawa had issues actually he still has yeah. issues now even as a 30 whatever old man uh with kids and a wife uh, you know his mom is fine with obviously she's muslim but his dad was never okay with it so even when he goes to his parents house now i think he still prays in the garden outside the house because his, his dad doesn't like him praying inside the house mm. um so th there's ways around it sure definitely and you know you, you should try your best to uh you know sustain and maintain and uphold your islamic commitments um because that's that's ultimately what you know you're there to please allah um but you know if you're in a real threat of of you know something that might be life-threatening then um you know do what you may have to do in order to preserve yourself yeah yeah you know let me ask you this question right mm. obviously you've been learning about islam you learned about taqwa you know and i think you mentioned that the reason why you looked into these things is because you were like yo uh, you know is life just me like oh getting married having a kid and then dying that's it right yeah. um and then obviously when you learned about islam would you was there that was there anything specific that made you think okay you know what this is it um Apart from like the general message of you know Tawhid and monotheism, in the fact that it doesn't reject the previous scriptures, it mm. builds upon them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously, it doesn't say that oh Jesus never existed because obviously history proves that Jesus, Jesus alayhi salam, yeah, that he was a real person. Mm. So, and also the fact that the more you look into it, when you look the fact that like for for example, the science has now proven that honey is a better is better for you than antibiotics are in certain cases mm -hmm. as like a decongestion well islam's been saying that for 1400 years yeah. science is now trying to catch up to islam yeah. not the other way around but well, when you just generally just look into some of the things that islam says it naturally makes sense yeah. um whenever i've had doubts and i know there will always become things that will cause me to have a crisis of faith at some point whenever in life mm. um the thing that kind of makes me come back to it is the fact that the prophet Muhammad peace and blessed be upon him so in sad. one of his obviously prophecies about the end of times mm. was that it will not come until after Constantinople was conquered by an Islamic army. Yeah. Mm. Now, obviously, as we know, Constantinople at the time of the prophet peace be upon him was part of the Byzantine empire being one of the biggest superpowers in the world yeah. at that time. Yeah. I mean, that's like, I mean, do you mind what part of Manchester are you, are you guys both from Manchester? Yeah, yeah, we're both Manchester. Uh, what part of Manchester? Is it city centre or is it? Yeah, uh, so. Close by well, city centre for me. Yeah, I live in I'm more south of Manchester, yeah. Okay, so it's basically like him, so him saying that Muslims will conquer Constantinople is like saying a group of kids from the small part of Manchester that you guys might live in will yeah. one day conquer the United States. Yeah. Yeah. At the time yeah. of saying that, that is impossible to believe. Yeah, yeah, it happened 600 years after yeah. his death. I mean, uh, now, there's a very, very good uh, book on this, actually, that's uh, written by the IRA team called Forbidden Prophecies. And it mm -hmm. expands upon kind of the false prof prophecies by, uh, you know, 
previous prophets like and even civilizations like the ancient maya and then also you know famous famously known people like nostradamus mm. um and it talks about how their prophecies were quite kind of vague um they could have easily been predicted with any knowledge of like socio-political circumstances or mm. you know financial circumstances economical circumstances or whatever right but yeah. uh the prophet was saying these uh very very unbelievable things they were almost you know completely out of like if, number one you know you could argue that if he said it for fame then why would he say something such as you know we're gonna consta- conquer constantinople which got him laughed at by the you know by the Quraysh. and uh, we he, he says i see the jewels of um such and such faraway empires i think he says i see yemen i see syria i see all these uh faraway places that were ruled by the persian byzantine empires so mm-hmm. how you know the, it literally got him laughed at and mocked by the Quraysh because he's saying how are you guys going to go for a group of you know barely a thousand to some something that can conquer conquer hundreds of thousands of you know uh, soldiers. yeah exactly yeah um, um yeah definitely so and and also like say so, so that's kind of that hadith um is what clears up any crisis of doubt that i've had is if he can predict things that then came true hundreds of years after his death that yeah. were incredibly specific yeah that means that the things that haven't come true just means they haven't come true yet yeah yeah it's also for example um like so, for example, for example, the prophet peace be upon him said that obviously the day of judgment will not come until after I've died. Now, yep. if that was the only thing that he'd ever said, that is a very, if without trying to sound disrespectful, it's a very convenient thing to yeah. say. Yeah, because yeah. that means if it doesn't happen, then there's no recourse upon him yeah. because he's dead. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's like when he said the, like the Euphrates River will dry up. Yeah. He didn't say it would evaporate. He said he because I'm assuming the Arabic words are different for dry up and evaporate. Yeah. Because the Euphrates so, River. Yeah is drying up mm. not through global warming or climate change but because turkey is installing dams yeah. yeah that is causing parts of it in iraq to be barren oh, essentially yeah. it almost yeah. looks like a group of puddles now in certain yeah. places yeah so, it's crazy yeah. how like a man from 1400 years ago could just sit here mm. and say that okay this is gonna happen yeah 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 like because obviously like obviously some of his prophecies are somewhat for lack of a better term convenient Mm. Such as when he said that children will not listen to their parents. Well, every generation is worse than the generation before. Yeah. So, mm. you know that that was like I say natural. But but so if all of his prophecies were like I say convenient, it would be a different story. But yeah. mm. there's no way that a man 1400 years ago in the middle of a desert who couldn't read or write could be able to predict something like that with, mm. in the ways that he had with any sort of accuracy at all yeah. unless he was either the only true psychic to have ever existed <laughs> or it was yeah. divinely inspired yeah and i think going back to sorry to cut you off going back to what you said before is everyone has this natural state of uh of you know tawhid uh mm-hmm. that is it's something in islam that we call the fitra which is yeah. the innate disposition right and every person has that every person is born with it and there's been research done i think uh previously that um i can't remember the exact i think it might have been pure research but i don't remember you you might have to look it up um but it was you know these i don't know how many groups of kids they took that were like under five or something and they um they slowly raised them up in a in an environment of um non like non ex no external no religious influence basically right mm. um and try to maintain as like uh neutral of a of a, a, a you know um a kind of interference as possible right so there was nothing outside no no kind of forced perspective onto them um and they they you know when they grew up they uh they kind of questioned them on, on what you believe and they believe we, we believe there is a creator we believe he's one in number right and we believe there's somehow there's some way that he's trying to communicate with us um and so yeah you can just tell that if you leave someone alone a long enough period without any external influence they will eventually go back to the their fitra and actually this isn't been, even been uh, documented in cases such as uh, the IRA, the, the Dawa organization, when they go to these faraway African countries, right? We mentioned this in the last episode, when they go to like these countries within the Philippines, within Africa, etc. Um, the people there, you know, they're very tribal people. They're very in, in touch with nature. They're very in touch with like the spiritual aspect of stuff, right? Um, when you go there, you tell them about the Muslim Islam, literally every single time they've been there, almost everyone has accepted Islam. If not everyone, I'm pretty sure everyone has accepted Islam. They will literally start 
saying the Shahada the same day. They will start praying the same day. They will start learning how to read the Quran the same day. Just because it all fits in line with the with their natural, you know, innate disposition. Mm. Because, like, really, I've always basically believed in God in some way, form, or fashion, apart from maybe like a week in high school where it was cool to be an atheist. Yeah. But that <laughs> yeah, doesn't really count. But at the same time, it's like, for example, uh, so I'm sure you guys have seen the debate with Muhammad Hijab and Cosmic Skeptic. Yeah. Um, it's like, well, it, obviously, yes, it's like, well, you know, fair enough. Our parent, I'm assuming your parents have never had to sit you down and tell you that murder is wrong. Yeah. For example, course, it's something yeah. you've always known. Yeah, of course. Now, yeah. How have we always known that? Yeah. Um, and people say, oh, well, it's part of your natural instinct. Okay, well, where does the natural instinct come from? Mm. Like something, we have to be at the very least given a push in the right direction mm. in order to develop the instinct. Yeah. Which is something that, that's why science will never be able to disprove religion. Mm. So I was talking to a Christian friend of mine, and he said that, well, we were talking about atheists. Mm. And he said, well, in order to be able to say that specifically and categorically, categorically that there is no God, mm. it means that you have to know every single literal thing about the universe that has ever been mm. in order to be able to say that there is no God. So, for example, like I can make the claim now that I've got a million pounds in my wardrobe. I don't. But... Yeah. And you guys say, well, you're lying. Well, how would you know that I'm lying? You've never seen my wardrobe. Yeah. So that's basically um, – so it makes more sense to believe in God in the sense that there's always going to be something that science cannot prove. So – because obviously new studies lead to new discussions of course, and so yeah. on and so forth. Yeah, yeah. So that little grey area of lack of knowledge, that's where God is. He couldn't mm. have revealed all the truths of us to us at one time. Our brains would have exploded. I can't even handle pre-calculus. <laughs> let alone the truths of the universe that's true yeah. Uh, yeah and the fact that like i say things about islam are coming true now that were predicted 1400 years ago it why does that mean that then the him saying that there's one creator who created the heavens and the earth and the universe could also not be true 100 yeah, yeah definitely you know what um, um, obviously um it is almost maghrib time so, so i think we mm. should start wrapping up but yeah, yeah. Um, I'll say a few points. And before that, Jazakallah Khair for coming today and joining oh, no, us uh, for the podcast. Oh, my episode. pleasure. Thank you for accepting and for having me. Yeah, no, this is my course, first podcast. I was really, really nervous. Yeah, uh, I hope you <laughs> no, enjoyed. You did great, Masha. Hope you enjoyed your experience here. Yeah, um, no, how about like, we, we really love this, listening right? to you. Huh? Um, this has recorded all of this, right? Because I haven't got the little recording button flashing up on yeah, my yeah, screen. Yeah, no, I, I'm recording it independently for, for it. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. But yeah, um, just a couple of okay for coming. Um, I think it, you know what, like I, I'm not gonna lie, like I, I was going to ask more questions and stuff. But then mm. when you were talking, I was just I forgot we were on the podcast. I was like, I was just listening. I thought I was I was listening to like a lecture or something because I completely <laughs> forgot we were recording. <laughs> you know, Subhanallah. Like, you know, what? I'm happy to do a part two at any point. Oh, definitely, definitely, yeah, 100%, definitely, yeah. uh, de- definitely do another one. Mm. Um, one thing I would say, you know what, like for me personally, obviously, I, like, I wasn't practicing um from the beginning you know um but one of the things that uh, sort of made me um practice my faith a lot more or look at my faith a lot more was the fact that when we look at islam it is so unbelievably confident in itself like the quran in itself when it starts it says listen this is a book without faults this yeah. whole mm. book with all the pages in it talking about economics talking about p- politics talking mm. about this talking about society individual blah 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 right mm. all of this it says this is a book without faults this mm. is the book from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet mm. sallam, you know with his hadith and stuff there's just so much confidence in it right and then you know the challenges i'm sure you guys have heard of the challenges um, to prove Islam or to disprove Islam, there was uh, there's like three four points. Oh, the, Cor- the what they call the Quran challenge. Yeah, the if Quran you challenge. Think you can provide s- something of equal or greater value? Yeah, or exactly. By all means, if chapter. you have witnesses, bring them forward. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing horrifically there, but yeah, yeah, yeah. well, apparently <laughs> no, it's very someone. Good. It's very good. Oh, thank you. Apparently, <laughs> someone has actually done that. Uh, I think I, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Well, basically, it turned out what he did was he took a like a verse from the Bible and then comp- and then put it together with a similar verse from the Quran yeah. and just rewrote the language slightly so it all flowed together. Yeah. But then people, but then obviously, I think people who obviously do know the Quran and the Bible said, "Hang on a minute, you've just used verses from both books and stuck them together. That doesn't count." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I was speaking to um. I'll, I, I, I forget the brother's name now. Um, he's American, but I, he lives in London. He's from Houston. He's Afghan. He's Afghani. 
Um, J- Jamil. Jamal something? Nasser? No, uh, well, maybe he's got very long hair and a beard. But he long. was. Um, he came down to. Um, he's done a couple of talks on the uni for Discover Islam Week at the uni, right. and he said that um, you know people have been trying for fourteen hundred years to do this. Yeah, mm. exactly. Even native Arabic speakers have tried to do this. They can't. Mm. They end up yeah. writing just weird poetry as opposed to religiously significant poetry. Mm. Yeah, exactly. You and, know, it's like it's like yeah, like the Quran. It says it so confidently. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says his hadith so confidently. And mm. the fact is, no one can disprove it. Like, it's not no. just confident. And, you know, as soon as it happens, some other person's mm. like, wait, no, that's wrong. No one can say it's wrong. And mm. it's crazy, man. Yeah. But yeah, with exactly. that said, and my if... parents are yelling at me right now, <laughs> saying, I need to go pray. Um, yeah, yeah. so I'll, I'll make one last point on that. And then obviously we yeah, can wrap this up. Um, Apologise to your parents for me, of course. <laughs> um, which was, you know, like I say, about in regards to the Quran challenge, if people at that time when it was revealed and it was basically revealed almost in their version of common language, mm-hmm. if they couldn't match that, yeah, what makes these like people from DCCI ministries or David Wood think they yeah, can do it? They can do and it they can't yeah. speak yeah, basic exactly. Arabic, let alone yeah. Quranic classical Arabic. Yeah. So, 100%. Yeah. So the day that, like I say, someone can disprove Islam is the day that, you know, we'll talk about that. But mm. I highly doubt that will ever happen. Yeah, if yeah. that would have happened, it, it would have happened in these last 1,400 years. It would have happened. Yeah, exactly. But the fact so, is it didn't. I mean, it would have happened when the Prophet Muhammad, peace and bless be upon him, was alive. Yeah. Because, you know, and if they couldn't disprove the guy that's preaching it, then how can you disprove, you know, everything that follows on from that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, yeah. but anyway, brothers, you're right. We need to go pray. Um <laughs> So apologize to your families for me. I guess with that said, Jazakallah khair for joining us today. Please do subscribe to Tahib the Observer. His um, YouTube will be linked down in the description below. Check him out. Mm. But yeah, with that said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.